Hey everybody, it's Irene with Brainstorm Makers, and we have an infestation. Now, obviously I'm in the greenhouse. If you've followed us for any length of time, you know that we have had the occasional problem of pests in the greenhouse. Our biggest problem in here is usually thrips because we're not thrip proof. We don't have thrip screen on all the windows and all that kind of stuff. Back when we used to leave the top window open there, uh, that year happened to be a bad thrip year. And we did wind up with a really bad infestation in here. But I simply kept after it and we were able to do well enough to control it so that we got our harvest. Mostly what we grow in here during the summer is tomatoes and peppers, which are not super susceptible to thrips in comparison to some other plants like, say, lettuce or something. But at this time of year, we don't normally have anything. I usually find about one stink bug a month. And I noticed there were a couple little gnats in here the other day, but they were gnats. They were not anything else. I checked that carefully. They were fungus gnats, so a couple of spots have gotten a little too wet, we'll let it dry out, they'll be gone, it'll be fine. But yesterday, one of the things I do is I'm out here at least a couple of times a day, usually many times a day, especially when I'm transplanting and fertilizing and all that kind of stuff. And yesterday I spotted something I have never seen in here before, which is aphids. And I know where they came from. They came from these plants. These plants were a gift. And as I look back, I am like, okay, how could the people who bought these have guessed there was a problem? Well, you know, you can get you can get tricked no matter where you buy stuff from. That sometimes something just goes wrong. You can get some white flies because there's just some eggs on your plant and you don't see them. But as long as you're on this, as long as you're watching every day, you'll catch the infestations before they become big and you can spray them. What would I have considered to be giveaways? Well, okay, this says cabbage and the name of the company that sold it, which I will not mention. The people who sold this cabbage did not know what the variety was. I wouldn't buy it. Why not? Because I don't want a random cabbage. Now I'm looking at this cabbage and I'm like, you know, it almost looks more like lettuce than it does like cabbage. But we'll call it a cabbage and have faith it is a cabbage. But I also have faith that it came with aphids. Now when I planted these plants, I look them over pretty carefully. But the problem is when you have a plant that's growing from a central stem, you have all these little stems that go in down in here. And there could easily be a little bug hiding in there that you just don't see. The lighting is not quite right, you're a little tired, you're just trying to get a project done, and you miss it. Also, aphids is one of those bugs that can come in in the soil. So. My guess is these guys were in their eggs were in the soil. And yeah, they have hatched out and I now have this nasty little collection of aphids on three buckets of plants. The cabbage, the purple pak choy and the Brussels sprouts. Now, the first thing I did <coughs> was try to isolate them. I moved them from this end of the greenhouse, which I, which where I had two of them tucked in over here. I shipped them to the other end. Now, why would I do that? Well, our major airflow is in this direction. And even though aphids can fly once they reach a certain phase of their existence, with airflow this way, it'll still tend to keep it down there. We also did this with blight in our tomatoes. We put the, plant, the tomato plants that were 
most susceptible to blight down here. So especially with the summer airflow being very heavy in this direction where we have uh, a swamp cooler, which is an evaporative cooler in that wall, and it's pushing all the air this way, it meant that any blight that attached to that was going to tend to go that way. And you know, it really did work. I'm not saying it was perfect. It gradually crept down the line, but we also had less susceptible varieties as it went down the line. So basically, we achieved our entire season of growth with relatively little problem. At the very end, I was trimming off any branches that were obviously blight infected, but it was enough to control it. The plants were growing fast enough. We got our harvest. That was the only thing that mattered to us. We were not applying for a Better Homes and Gardens gorgeous greenhouse award. We were simply trying to provi provide dinner, basically, and lunch, and sometimes breakfast. <laughs> so, I first thing I did was I moved the two pots of plants that have aphids down there. Now, this pot, which also has something else growing in it, in this case a giant purple kohlrabi, also has an aphid infected in this case, cabbage. I checked individual leaves on the kohlrabi, and I found one leaf, the one that was closest to the nearest cabbage here, has a few aphids on it, just a couple, like literally three or four, and I smushed them. This one has one aphid on it. Now, I am not psyched about that. And this leaf here, because it's not healthy looking anyway, is going to go away. And when I say away, I mean it's leaving. <laughs> Anyone who's watched me clean in here knows that I usually have a bucket like this of leaves that have kind of yellowed and the stuff will go in here, and then it, when I'm done for the day, I will toss it. But when it comes to something like an infestation of aphids, that guy's going out the door right now. Now, what am I going to do with these? Well, I'm going to do two things. First thing is, I have two pots down here. I am going to transplant these guys out of there and into these pots. Now, I have to admit, when I saw this yesterday, I was very tempted to throw the, the containers with aphids just out the door to be honest I've got a very healthy greenhouse except for these guys now what I am doing here is I'm taking a large chunk of dirt in the anticipation I want to get the entire root ball and I want to get any of the dirt that may have come from the provider because there's a good chance that there's eggs in that dirt there's one cabbage Now, obviously, I'm going to water these because I'm not trying to kill them off outright. I'm trying to give them a shot. It's obviously not the plant's fault. It is, however, the fault of the company that sold these. When you don't know the variety, I won't buy it from you. That's, that's just my rule. And when we called on one of the other varieties and said, what you were calling that is not what it is because we looked it up and that's not what it looks like. They said, well, we don't know what the variety is. Okay. So there are things that I would probably buy from that location, but I would not buy any soil materials, any compost materials, or any live plants because, uh-uh. <laughs> so there we are. What do we do to get rid of these beasts? Well, what we do is neem oil. Now it depends on the variety that you happen to have as to what the mixing is. You'll notice I have a magic marker where it says two tablespoons here. That means that two to four tablespoons per gallon is the rule. Now I'm using a half gallon sprayer so in this case I can put two tablespoons into that half gallon sprayer and I know I'm good. I have a sprayer that's set aside just for pesticides, and I only use things like spinosad, 
neem. These are all Omri. That means they're all organically approved for organic crops. Now, there are some rules. Some of them will say you can't use it uh, within a certain number of days of harvest. Uh, I'm not going to worry. Those plants, assuming they survive this little infestation, are not going to be harvested for months, so I'm not sweating it at all. But I have to spray every seven days if I want to be sure that I am really getting rid of these blasted aphids. And I will also be spraying the leaves on this kohlrabi plant to make sure. And I'm also going to spray the soil surface here because neem oil will kill eggs too. And what I want to make sure is that I not only have gotten any nymph, which is the, they just look like little bulbous things on the uh, leaves. I, then I've gotten every stage of this thing, including the eggs, because I don't want this to spread. I have dealt with aphids in the yard before, and they can be really, <laughs> the world I would use is pernicious. They can be really hard to kill, and just a pain in the behind. Now, in the yard, I just kept them sort of batted back enough so that I could get my harvest and not worry about it. In here, they could become a perennial problem and I do not want to have to replace all of the soil in here and everything else because this is too important a resource for us in terms of producing our own veggies. So I have mixed up my two gallons, I mean two with two gallons, yeah. I love two gallons, that's the way I feel, yeah. Uh, my two, um, I mixed up my two tablespoons of neem oil with water, <laughs> and we have my things turned on. You can always tell when you have the, uh, there's a little lever on here that lets us work. When you're squirt, when you're trying to get bugs, especially something like an aphid, underneath the leaves, underneath the leaves. You know, they will be on top of the leaves, but where they really like to hang out is underneath the leaves. I am going to squirt the entire soil surface here. Now, I wouldn't qualify this as a real drench because although I'm spraying well, I'm not going to soak this completely. But it's going to definitely soak the top because I want to make sure that in the process of moving those plants, I didn't accidentally knock a couple off that are crawling around on the surface. This stuff will kill on contact. It will pretty much within half an hour if there's anything alive and crawling on your plants chances are you missed it and that's what I'm going to do I'm going to do that with these and I'm going to do that with everything else that I see now I'm going to be watching this carefully these plants were not in physical contact with these cabbages the only plant that was in physical contact was this that doesn't mean I can't start to have problems other place because uh, some of the flying versions may have already escaped and gotten out there and be doing their damage by laying eggs. And if you're in a gardening situation in your yard and you wonder, well, where the heck did those aphids come from? There were no aphids here. They, assuming they weren't in the soil, they flew in. Now, when I moved these pots down here, what I did was I actually scooched everything out of the way. In fact, if you look down the aisle here, you'll notice everything's like scooched over and I moved stuff around and everything. I did not want anything to be able to come into physical contact with these pots. Think of them as total pariahs. <laughs> because these uh, purple... Paul Robbies have pretty nasty infestations down in the center. And honestly, what I'm going to do, I'm going to spray the heck out of these guys. Every leaf. Because that like that leaf that was on the ground. In fact, I'm going to rip this leaf off so you can see. This is really nasty. Really nasty. Now it's been sprayed. But I think you could probably see that. All those little brown things here, tan things, those are all aphids. All of them. 
Now they've just been soaked with uh, neem oil. So they are, if not dead right this second, they will be dead quickly. But I'll put this outside. I'm not even gonna leave it around in here. And I can feel the aphids on my hands because they're squishy. And the, and the aphids are in like every nook and cranny of these plants. So they're under the leaves. They're down in the little in-between sections. They're not just where you can spot them easily. They're in the hard to spot places, which one of the reasons it's hard to get rid of aphids is because they get in every nook and cranny. And these bottom leaves are just gross. They're covered with aphids. Take a couple of those off because they are just coated with aphids. Some of them are not too bad. But the bottom leaves on this on these two were just gross with aphids. Yeah. Here, this is a perfect example. That was the bottom leaf. It wasn't doing all that well anyway. Look at the aphids on that. Yuck. So and these things. They go crazy. They just breed like rabbits and worse. And uh, if you don't get keep up with them, and you have to hit them every seven days until there's nothing. And even once you see nothing, my recommendation was hit them for another seven days, and then watch like a hawk. Because uh, I've got all kinds of tender plants in here, like like uh, lettuce and stuff. I've also got tougher plants that are less likely to be as susceptible, like cabbage. But you'll see me squirting the whole surface here because I want surface of the soil to be covered too here. If they've any of them have fallen off, been washed off actually, and, and didn't get soaked enough to die, you know, I want them gone. Gone, gone, gone. If I can't control it with organic, I better get rid of the plants and move on. Because I am not interested in using weird stuff. And some of the uh, non-organic stuff could be absolutely beyond horrific for your pollinators. And now, neem oil is one of those things you have to be careful of with pollinators. Now, obviously, it's winter. There are no bees in here. I will be making sure when I use it outside, I use it either early, 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 or late. And generally speaking, what we do is we use it late. So we will actually go out with headlamps after all of our bees and bumblebees and stuff like that have gone to bed for the night, which they do before sunset usually. And we will go out after dark with headlamps. <laughs> Henry will have a flashlight and I'll have a headlamp and I will spray then if I need to, to control things. Most of the time we try to use insecticides that do not damage pollinators and really can't damage pollinators. Um, one of the really good ones that way is any of the BT products. That's Bacillus thuringiensis. It's simply a, uh, it kills caterpillar sort of things, you know, that the caterpillary stage of bugs where they're uh, running around on your plant and munching all your leaves. Um, what happens is when they eat that, the bacillus gets into their gut and literally kills them from the inside out. They normally stop eating within 12 hours and then they just become a, a playground for the bacillus, which eats them from the inside out. But it doesn't hurt uh, bumblebees and stuff, which don't eat your plants. This has got a very distinctive smell to it. I used to really hate it. I no longer hate it. I just accept it. And it's a sign to me that I'm making progress because uh, it's a very distinctive smell. And, and I will use a uh, special soap when I get in the house, actually. Yeah, we want to wash up after this. If I'm doing a lot of spraying, say if I had tomatoes up like this and I was spraying overhead and everything, I would wear a dust mask and I would, which I, a disposable one, which I would throw away when I was done. I would wash from the elbow up for sure. Sometimes if I've really gotten soggy, I will actually uh, strip off my shirt and, and change clothes. Just because something is organic doesn't mean it's really safe. I do not appear to be sensitive to this particular product, chemically speaking. Uh, I nonetheless wash well afterwards and I'll have my hands because this hand was holding leaves. 
If I was really worried about it, I would wear nitro gloves when I was doing this. I'm not really worried about it. So, you know, I but I will wash. And I have that uh, kind of orange soap that's good for getting rid of the stink of various things. My microphone has quit. <laughs> so that means it's time for me to quit too. So be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because obviously we will be doing lots more. I will keep you apprised of what happens here. Worst case, these go out that door. I'm giving them a shot. I really was excited about these purple kohlrabi because I've never grown them before and I was really curious as to flavor differences and everything else. But you know what? I've got a bunch of healthy kohlrabi down there. I'm not kohlrabi. Oh, let me try that again. These are pak choy. There we go. I was really concerned, uh, excited about these purple pak choy because I've never tasted them before and we were really curious as to what they'd be like. We were also excited to try Brussels sprouts again because we've had lousy luck with them in the past. Okay, uh, Brussels sprouts could be a problem for a lot of people so that wasn't a shock and we were hoping that these would give us experience with some new plants. So you're going to have to come back and find out what happens. I'm going to be spraying every seven days, today is Monday. So I will spray every Monday for the next three weeks until I am sure that these are under control. If they do not get under control, I will eliminate the plants. I'm trying not to do that because I was very intrigued by these and I wanted to try something new, but I am not willing to jeopardize the rest of the greenhouse. I will also be watching for any kind of outbreaks anywhere else in the greenhouse because that's the last thing I need. I know people who've had um, aphid infestations in their broccoli before and it's gross you have to soak the broccoli in water for salt water brine for uh, ever to get the, the aphids out and you really don't ever get them completely out so you have to be reconciled to eating aphids and that's not my idea of a good time so excitement not the kind we wanted but it happens sometimes um, we have had, we had a small infestation of cabbage loopers this past fall, which was really annoying. And it was in the weirdest places, like on the tomato plants. You'd look at the tomato plant and you're like, why are those leaves missing? They were there the other day. And then you realize it's a cabbage looper. Because what happened was a cabbage moth got in here late in the season, really late in the season, and laid eggs. And we wound up with some damage on the cabbage, but a lot of damage on the tomatoes and uh, weird places where you wouldn't really expect. It happens, it's part of gardening, you have to be prepared. So I keep neem oil, spinosad, BT, and a couple of others. Most of them you can get as Haas tools and they have a really good chart there to tell you what they'll kill, okay? I try not to use the stuff more than I have to, but when something like this happens, I have two choices. I can either spray and try and control it or I can throw them away. And I'm not ready to throw them away yet, so we'll see what happens. So be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because obviously there will be lots more happening. So until next time, bye.